Did you know that the moon flies through the Earth's atmosphere? Observations show the distant cloud of hydrogen atoms that make up the outermost part of Earth's atmosphere stretches beyond the moon, almost twice the distance to the moon. A new study says this gaseous layer that wraps around Earth, known as geocorona, reaches up to 391,464 miles away, or 50 times the diameter of our planet. Scientists based the study on observations made more than 20 years ago by the ESA NASA Solar and Heliospheric Observatory, SOHO. The new study could help guide the search for watery planets outside of our solar system. These observations could be done only at certain times of the year, when the Earth and its geocorona came into view for the SOHO's instruments, SWAN, short for Solar Wind Anisotropies. SWAN used its sensitive sensors to trace the hydrogen signatures and precisely detect how far the very outskirts of the geocorona are. Launched in December 1995, the SOHO Space Observatory has been studying the sun from its deep core to the outer corona and the solar wind for over two decades. The satellite orbits around the first Lagrange point, some 1.5 million kilometers from Earth towards the sun. This location is a good vantage point to observe the geocorona from outside. The presence of hydrogen in a planet's exosphere is often a sign that water vapor exists closer to its surface. This is the case for Earth, Mars, and Venus. The first telescope on the moon, placed by Apollo 16 crew in 1972, captured an image of the geocorona surrounding Earth. You can see it glowing brightly in ultraviolet light. At that time, the astronauts on the moon's surface did not know that they were actually embedded in the outskirts of the geocorona. The sun interacts with hydrogen atoms through a particular wavelength of ultraviolet light called Lyman alpha, which the atoms can both absorb and emit. Since this type of light is absorbed by the Earth's atmosphere, it can only be observed from space. Thanks to its hydrogen absorption cell, the SWAN instrument could selectively measure the Lyman alpha light from the geocorona and discard hydrogen atoms further out in interplanetary space. The new study shows how sunlight causes geocorona's hydrogen atoms to differ in density on Earth's day side and night side. The denser day side region of hydrogen is still rather sparse, with just 70 atoms per cubic centimeter at 60,000 kilometers above Earth's surface and about 0.2 atoms at the moon's distance. However, these particles do not pose any threat to future space travelers orbiting the moon. There is also ultraviolet radiation associated to the geocorona as the hydrogen atoms scatter sunlight in all directions, but the impact on astronauts in lunar orbit would be negligible compared to the main source of radiation, the sun explains Jean-Louis Berthaud, co-author and former principal investigator of SWAN. But the bad news is that the Earth's geocorona could interfere with future astronomical observations performed in the vicinity of the Moon. Billions of years from now, our dead Sun will solidify into a giant crystal ball. Most stars entering the final chapter of their lives tend to shrink, wither, and slowly turn white white dwarfs solidify into crystal over time. These crystal balls fill our skies. This means that billions of white dwarfs in our galaxy have already completed the process and are essentially crystal spheres in the sky. The sun itself will become a crystal white dwarf in about 10 billion years. When a white dwarf cools enough, the molten liquid at its core begins to solidify. This means the star begins turning to crystal. This is the first direct evidence that white dwarfs crystallize or transition from liquid to solid. If you like this channel and want to support us, please subscribe and hit the bell icon.